nothing but professionalism is dripping from this fantastic right fantastic situation rock on I call that a success so. yeah I would say there you go you're live your audio's good video's good alright just wait for people to come in too well, Alex, thanks for, for joining here, and uh, I think for anybody that might happen to be listening in the, uh, in the audience or in the future, this conversation will be all about Gen Con 2024, uh, maybe tips and tricks that are involved with going to conventions, uh, how those kind of work out, and just exploring the, the nature of maybe even Indianapolis as, a, as kind of a, maybe a how-to guide for things that you definitely want to check out and just a general convention going experience so mm -hmm. i guess i'll kick off by asking what cons have you been to ah uh, well um i've been to quite a few anime conventions um comic con or not comic con but uh c2e2 out in illinois was another one i've gone to oh, that's um, a big one too yeah yeah love lo i mean i love going to conventions honestly it's a super super great time my uh <laughs> my girlfriend and my roommate are dragging me to a uh, furry convention actually at the end of next month so it's uh it's going to be a very interesting time but cons are i don't know I, I don't think it really even matters what the topic is at the point of the convention i just love being in an area where people are just so jazzed to like be where they want to be you know they're they're playing the games they like they're repping their favorite anime they're loving their own fursuit whatever it might be they're absolutely having a blast and those are you know uh ASEN is probably the one i've been to the most ASEN out in uh, illinois out in chicago um i think i went there eight years in a row at some point starting when i was graduating high school and nice. uh it's it's great I, I love going to conventions and i think that really is like you have to learn how to go to conventions you know there is an art to going to conventions mm -hmm. i would say myself personally i've probably gone to more than I think I'd probably actually be able to count. Um, one of the things I used to keep is I keep all the convention lanyards. I have hundreds of convention lanyards from basically 2010 to now. So at one point in my life, I was going to 30, 40, 50 conventions a, a calendar year. Uh, wow. C2E2, as you mentioned, uh, Anime Crossroads, ASIN, uh, Gen Con, Origins, uh, PopCon Indianapolis, PopCon Louisville, uh, there was a myriad of them, uh, a bunch of anime conventions that I don't even know if exist anymore because COVID era knocked some of those out. Sci-fi convention Starbase Indy, uh, which is one here in Indianapolis. Then there's just plenty, like, you know, Dragon Con as an example is one down in, you know, that's unhinged, but it's really great, right? So there's just, it depends on the ambience you're looking for. There's just a ton of, uh, a ton of options out there that exist for different conventions that you want to go to. And frankly, there's, there's, you know a con for everybody right like if you're into something it's probably a convention that that exists like you know there are uh, war gaming conventions as an example in chicago um such as like adepticon which is more for like tabletop miniatures but then there's like rpg focused uh, conventions or there there are some that maybe are more like in gen con very board game oriented right or card game oriented uh mm -hmm. compared to the other stuff yeah yeah very very much so a a special place for everybody and i think it's once you, once you go, you know, if you're ever hesitant about going to a convention, I, I think, honestly, the thing that always gets me is just, like, hotel prices seem to go up every single year. I'm sure, I'm not sure why the hell that always happens, but if you're lucky enough to have them in your backyard, essentially, uh, you tend to be able to make things work, and, you, you know, you don't have to worry about getting a hotel, but there's a lot of people who fly out from different states or even other parts of the world to go to these big events, and, uh, once you once you get in and you experience a rowdy couple of nights at a convention, I tell you, right? I I I never got the the true go away to college experience, but conventions I would assume are probably pretty near to to that for for me. It's just like it feels very freeing, and you're you're able to be with there with all the people that you love. So. Well, like here, here's some example. This is uh, this is probably maybe backwards because I don't know if this is actually flipped the right way. But this is some of the, you know photography I've done at some of these events, and a lot of this is kind of older because I don't do as much of these anymore. But 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's various events. Matsuri Con, I was looking at some of these. There's uh, Ayaumi Con. There is uh, Ohio Con, which is another one. Then there's uh, there's that one that's at the water park. It, it's it's I forget the name of it, but it's that it's just, there's so many to choose from. And the friends and persons that I've met over the years really have become uh, MTAC. It's another one that's in Middle Tennessee. But basically, within eight hours of Indianapolis, if it was a convention I could go to, I like drove to those conventions and I would uh, I would go there. So yeah, it's uh, it's a life life experience and if you've never done it I highly highly recommend um, mm -hmm. maybe it, it doesn't have to be a specific way well, maybe Renaissance festivals the higher Renaissance Fair Bristol things like that they're all within the same ecosystem uh, there hell there's even a steampunk support a steampunk version of a convention here I think it's called the Circle City Aerodome which is here in Indianapolis right so uh, there used to be websites out there and I think they still exist where you can literally search up any conventions but uh, you know, with a lot of that said, right, that this video I'd like to focus on for people that may have never gone to an event or that are interested in kind of upping their convention experience or game because Gen Con, as an example, uh, that's a very large conference, right? A very large mm -hmm. event where there's, there's almost too much to do. And I think my very first tip to everybody is um, try and maybe pre-game a plan on what you want to do. Unless you really like chaos and you want to roll that dice and do some things, you know, have at it. But you know, knowing a little bit in advance can really go a long way as far as ensuring that you, you have a, a very good time. Um, I know that there's a lot of things people can pack. There's medical conditions or stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I would say depending on your goal, right, you know, let's say you're there to play board games. Well, your pack is going to look completely different than somebody that's there to play RPGs that might need dice and, you know, dice towers, uh, pen and paper. Some of it is, you know, universal across the board, right? Uh, as an example, make sure you have things like your badge holder. So this holds the Gen Con badge. This one is uh, from the 50th anniversary. I'll cover up my stuff because, by the way, one thing you never want to do is never indicate to anybody your actual barcode slash code number online because you, those can get you in big trouble. But, like, I have my this year badge right in front of me. And then there are things called generic tickets. I'll show the back of these here. So, like, when you do events, right, I have a lot of events I'm going to this year. This is a first for me. I've changed my game plan this year. I'm going to be doing a lot of demos. So things like that, having your ID, uh, general things that just like when you would travel, right? These items are, are important, and most people sometimes overlook some of these items, and I feel like at a fundamental level, you'll forget something so simple, your, your convention will feel like it's ruined, but a lot of things are fixable as long as you have your ID, your convention badge ticket, almost everything else can be solved for. Uh, credit cards or however you're paying for stuff would probably be pretty important as well, but, you know, there's a lot of cool technology out there too. I, I don't even leverage stuff like Uber, but I mean, you know, parking yeah. is a good. I mean, I could go. This video literally cannot be long enough to go into the nuances and details of just overarching convention stuff, like how to find the best parking, whether you should purchase parking in advance, whether you should, mm -hmm. you know, buy a hotel six months in advance, do room shares. Hell, I'm I'm learning that for one of the conventions. I'll be spending my first time in an Airbnb with a group of people uh, because that was the most affordable, cheapest route to take, and I had no idea that that was really a better option versus I'm kind of old school. I just go rent a hotel room and go from there, uh -huh. right? And then there's hotel rates and hotel blocks, so uh, you can get lost in the details very quickly, uh, which can be super overwhelming. So, uh, yeah, 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 that's that's it. That's a nutshell of just kind of the, the very bare-bones basics, and we haven't even walked into the convention center heck we may have not even oh, gotten yeah. in our car yet like if we're if we're planning this like right now i have an empty backpack next to me in case i really got clever and wanted to try to demo a pack um but like you know if you're going for cards right a card box that has decks um you know it, it really depends right like what are you looking for uh, i yeah i actually don't even know where to start to be completely frank because there's just almost too much information to go over <laughs> yeah I, I think i think honestly when it comes down to it uh there's there's going to be a little chaos when it comes to going to a convention you know I, I think every single time i attempt to plan something to where i'm like i'm going to these panels i'm going to check out these vendors i'm going to go do this on these days it's just like it ends up you know i end up getting uh you know brought into a, a pizza party instead of going to a panel and you know then we go out to eat with a bunch of friends instead of going to this uh you know this the, the cosplay contest to go check out right and so embrace the a lot chaos of it is, yeah exactly i think a lot of it is um you know do the things that you know you want to go for right the, the, look through everything and see like that is something i'm really interested in i would love to check out x game or check out you know what even just like the cosplay contests or anything of the sort 
but oh yeah i definitely i definitely think that if there's going to be stuff at a convention especially at a place like gen con yeah where winter hall just, exhibit hall you're going to get lost you're going to get lost in there and you're going to go okay cool i wanted to do, i wanted to do this but this is cool i wanted to do this but this is cool and then I, honestly, it's just like at the end of the day, as long as you're having fun, I think that's really the best part. But more importantly, 100%. I do I do say the the Airbnb has become my my go to because I I hate hotel block stuff. I think it is it's great that they offer things like that, but man, is it a rat race! If you are not if you are not there the day those hotel blocks are opened. If you are not already on the phone with somebody in customer service getting that set up, you are going to be waiting probably days, if not weeks, before finally trying to get in there. And then it turns out every room is already booked and you have to go with uh, a secondary room that or you have to wait till somebody else's room, uh, you know, they cancel and then you have an opportunity to get in there. And so Airbnbs, you don't have to worry about somebody else trying to take your place. You can just find a place nearby and they tend to be cheaper, which is crazy to me. So I think I'm gonna go back to maybe starting with what I'd refer to as the most basic items you'd wanna bring with you to uh, to a convention and maybe start with that because over the years I've kinda, you know, tried everything from can I be a pack mule and carry everything with me, which works to a certain extent, but you're, it's just, it's very hard. Um, you know, some when you're in like the exhibit halls or vendor halls, depending on the size of the convention, uh, there's a lot of people that really complain about really big backpacks, right? Like I have a fairly large size backpack. I don't have just like a typical like school bag. I have more of a literally it's got board game bag where you can fit like board games sideways in it if you wanted to, if I expanded it. So it, the backpack itself can like, you know, extend out very, very big. That's nice. Um, and, and it's a beautiful bag. It covers all the bases. But when you're in narrow aisles, right, with multiple people walking around, and Gen Con being no small convention, it, it becomes like you're getting beat around, right, and you're beating other people up. So you got to be mindful of that and, and really treat treat that with some level of respect because at a certain point there is a level of absurdity. I mean, I've seen people obviously got children with carts and things like that, wheelchairs. I'm, I'm not talking anything about those. Um, but, like, from a, from a perspective of, you know, just – being at Gen Con multiple years, like you will see something sometimes, you'll just shake your head and say, Why? Why did you do that? <laughs> so, you know, things I tend to pack. Um, you know, this year I'm going to bring something different. There's a place called Buffalo Bills, uh, oh, I Wild, love Wild Bills. Bills. I um, love Buffalo Bills. Hold, I, hold, I have, you know what? I, I have my mug. I'll go get it later. I have, I, I have, I have my mug. I got you. Well, I have a copper one, and I forgot it at a convention. And then I bought this one. And this one has a little bit of a lid, but these will be like free drink refills. So while they're not super portable, because right at the top can you know it can spill. This is mm-hmm. it's, it's really for when you're out at lunch. But this will save you over the course of a couple of days. Now you got to spend the money to buy the drink up front. Uh, but this in this case, Wild Bill's right. He has a lot of the different craft uh, beverages that are non-alcoholic, and they're really really good, and they taste great. Uh, and if you get the okay. wristband, and you're there for four days. This thing will pay for itself in no time. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's All fantastic. Day. Um, All day. I, I could not. I, could, I didn't even know that was a thing at most conventions. It was at ASEN one year, and I was just like, this is the best thing that I, I don't even anything else in this vendor hall can go do whatever the hell they want. This is all I need is refills of craft root beer and orange cream soda. Like I'm, I'm good. I'm set. I don't need anything else. Like I'm gonna go buy some art and then I'm gonna go drink root beer. Like absolutely, this is the best. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to talk about the sections of the vendor hall, which we'll all jump to that at some point because there's mm-hmm. the artist alley, there's family pavilions, or at least at Gen Con, these are major. And most other cons will have something very similar. Yeah. They're they're all structured about the same. Uh, but circling back on like drinks, right? You can bring a refillable water bottle or a water bottle yourself. Uh, there are some rules. Read with what Gen Con allows. There are some exceptions on certain things. I don't have that pulled up right in front of me. I can't tell you the nuances, but their their website is pretty easy to navigate and says like, hey, these things are allowed and these are not allowed. Uh, right. So like show policies has some stuff about like, you know, things you can't bring, right? Don't bring weapons. Don't bring, you know, silly stuff like that. I'm sure they have things in there that talk about that. Uh, but, mm-hmm. you know, circling back to some other items, snack foods, uh, you know, honestly, make sure your shoes are a good shoe, right? Like, you know, I actually, before I go to Gen Con, uh, I'm going to go buy a new pair of shoes because you can see I have duct taped the back of my shoe here because, uh, sadly, my, uh, my 
my shoes have uh, seen better days and if you're going to be walking the 5-10 miles a day uh, you're going to want some super comfortable shoes which means yeah. super comfortable socks and um, probably you know if you want to even bring possibly like one extra shirt although if you're going to be buying shirts you don't need to bring an extra shirt because you'll just have one and then you'll be able to you know just get merch just wear merch yeah. all weekend That's get the merch go to tea turtle <laughs> get the tea turtle stuff i don't know God it's, dang. yeah tea turtle is tea turtle man they're uh, they're fantastic I, yeah i like i like it a lot i think um there's it really is important though that that you make sure that you're not i think out of all of the things listed good shoes are by far the most necessary thing because you are going to be doing a lot of walking you're going to be doing a lot of walking you're going to be doing a lot of moving around um and it is going to be something that you are going to regret if you do not end up doing because you're not, unless you're going for like a day if you're going for one day you know it's whatever right because there are day passes you don't have to go for a whole weekend but um but <laughs> If you're going for the whole weekend, you want to make sure that whatever you're in, whether it be your your actual gym shoes or whether it be um, like a cosplay. I, I can't tell you how many times I was with a uh, I was with a girlfriend of mine back in the day, and uh, she would cosplay in a very very cool outfit, but would always skimp on making her shoes really really good for the event. And uh, let me tell you, if you've never had the uh, the joy of being a handler for a cosplayer, uh, it is it is work, and uh, it is very easy for somebody who does not put the attention and detail into their shoes to uh, hurt a lot within the first like two hours of being at the convention. So, do make sure that shoes are a, a important thing that you are focusing on. But yeah, I, th I think it's really, when it comes down to it, I think that being prepared overall, making sure you're having a water bottle, if you have a water bottle with you. Um, I personally uh, used a, I, I brought a water bottle with me everywhere, but we did um, not, we, we did not so very great drinks out of this water bottle, if I am being very um, blunt. It's just not water. Uh, we, we ended up walking around conventions. Uh, anime conventions, I feel like, are a lot more Anime wild. conventions. Yeah, they're, I, I don't think I've ever drank water at an anime convention. Let's put it that way. Yep, um, yep, it, yep. That's a, that's a staple experience yeah. at an anime con. Obviously, you should drink, drink water. responsibly. Please drink water. <laughs> yeah. Please drink water, for God's sakes, because let me tell you, I've seen enough people have alcohol poisoning the night after, and it is... It is not a good time for them, I promise you. So if you there, are going to be drinking, drink responsibly. There is 100%. Um, there used to be something, I think it was like basically the uh, 3 two, one rule would be, you know, eight. it was the 8-3-1, eight, eight hours of sleep, three meals a day, one shower slash bath a day. And I found another version of that. I'm trying to see if I can pull it up real quick the other day because this was actually quite, you know, useful. Um, mm -hmm. because it's a general call out where most people are like, Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Um, see if I can pull that up. Yeah. Yeah. See if you can find it. Yeah. That is, that is the other thing that obviously is always needs to be talked about before a convention begins is, um, if you are assuming that you're not going to be bathing, you should be bathing. <laughs> There's a whole reason that there are showers at the places you stay at. You it's should the, be it's bathing. The, it's the whole reason that there is the deodorant fairies that run around. Yes, yes, the deodorant fairies. You you need you need to make sure that you're smelling good. Don't just like spray a whole bunch of axe on top of you right before you walk outside the door. Just take a, you know it shouldn't take you that long to shower. Just take like 15, 20 minutes. Make sure you wash yourself, and then put some deodorant on and go into the convention. It's easy peasy. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna try and fix something while we're live. I'm gonna oh, change. Yeah, I'm, gonna, and, I'm gonna reverse my screen uh, so good. that I'm looking at it backwards. But at least it'll make sense to whoever's reading it. That's fine. Yeah, that'll be much easier for the VOD for the reasons. Also, welcome on in, Ebby. Uh, I know we're in the in the chat, but welcome on in. Hopefully, you're having a great time, ready to learn about some Gen Con stuff. But yeah, we're we're kind of going over just some prep stuff right now. We're trying to. We want to make sure that you have everything. Another thing 
on your your topic list, but I'm sure it is. Um, don't personally, per, my own personal opus or, or opinion, don't buy convention food, okay? Go to a Walmart beforehand. 100%. Go to a Walmart, especially if you're going to be there for the whole weekend. Go to a Walmart or a local grocery shop. Just buy stuff for, like, sandwiches or, like, small little meals that you can heat up if you have a microwave in your hotel or a microwave in your Airbnb. Make sure to do that because you are going to feel much more full after eating that, and you're not going to hate yourself by spending convention prices on food. Because let me tell you, I will never in my life buy an $8 hot dog ever again because why in the world would you ever do that? Yeah, yeah, that's um, very, very true, actually. The food mm -hmm. situation is, uh, that's a whole ball of wax. So I, I did find it, but I'm not going to be able to reverse my screen, so I'm just going to go ahead and I guess I'll kind of read off some topics off it because I think it's still useful. Um, yeah. But, I mean, as I attempt to find which screen I was just on before I lose my brain. Got it. Uh, so it's called the Spicers 54321 Rule. And this was posted six years ago in the Gen Con forum, so you can actually find it under it's like 2017 General Topics. And it's kind of unique because this, uh, this topic here, it says that uh, you should get five hours of sleep. And he says he's not kidding. Uh, I agree with that. I would honestly probably call at least eight if you can manage it. Um, yes, certainly. It says four scheduled events, and um, I, I kind of, I'm going to, obviously, I'm breaking that rule with what I just showcased earlier with my, you know, string of events, so mm -hmm. we'll see how that works out, because I'm already breaking that rule. Three meals, that makes sense, uh, two showers, a partridge and a pear tree, and one trip through the exhibit hall. I actually will say I agree with all of those, with the exception of eight hours of sleep. I think if you can get eight hours of sleep, it should really be an eight, four, three, two, one. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's that's a what what's your thoughts? I, I so okay, I like that a lot. Obviously it's it's a nice kind of rule of thumb to use. I do agree that I think five hours of sleep is it's adequate, but I don't think that you should be telling people to only get five hours of sleep. I believe that anywhere between personally, if I'm not getting anywhere between six to eight you don't want to talk to me for the first two hours of me waking up the next morning, I promise you. Duffy! So, yeah, exactly. Like, I I don't think you realize what I need to go into my body in the morning to, to rev up that engine, especially if I have not had six to eight hours of sleep. So um, I think six, four, three, two, one is at least a lot more reasonable. But overall, it, the reason it's probably that low is because you're probably going to be up partying with everybody and hanging out and having a good time, and I think that's really what it's about. I like the four scheduled events. I feel like that is a, that is an adequate amount of events. Um, there are people who book their schedule pretty heavy, and that's totally fine. I feel like you're able to book your schedule heavier the more you go, because you know. You know where, the, you know where these halls are. You know where these vendors are located. You've studied the map before you've gone. You make sure that your times are online. You make sure the people you're going with are also in that same mindset. And so it's very much so easier to... Don't to, go to with a squirrel. An adjustment. Ooh, look right. over here. You're like, oh, what is that? Oh, oh, look oh, over oh, here. What is this over here? Oh, it's, look it's over like, here. That's me, by the way. This, that's yeah, me. Not... I'm that person at the convention. <laughs> It's it's great it's great that that's the case. I can't walk a like, straight line to save my life. There's a lot to do, you know. There's a lot to do, and especially, I mean, I can't tell you when I walk into an artist alley. Don't like most people are going to try to push me to one direction. My girlfriend's going to find something that she thinks is cute and going to pull me over there. I'm going to find something I think is cool. I'm going to go over there, and we're just back and forth all over the place until eventually we've walked the artist alley three times in a matter of a day and have spent, you know. Two hundred dollars a piece, and it's like, all right, like that—that's good. But if there are events you want to go to, there are tons of panels and events that happen, and especially at Gen Con, where there's all these games for you to try out, all these demos of new games coming out, new TCGs, new tabletop your, your games. Your time will be eaten up faster than you will realize. Exactly, because even if you consider 
each of those learn to plays like an hour and a half, two hours. Some of them are three to four for some of the ones I signed up for, and I don't. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna stay the whole one. Um, right, that's a lot. Like, that's a full lot. Trans- full transparency. I love Flesh and Blood. I know that's what this channel is mostly about: TCGs and Flesh and Blood. But like. There's the Blaze promo event where they want to play the the deck. Well, I really don't want to sit down and play for three, four hours. I'm going to get my promo, and if I get it right at the beginning, I'm just going to drop. And it's not that I don't want to play with somebody, but my goal at Gen Con is not there. They, being the manufacturer in this case, made it to where the only way for me to get it is to sign it for that event. So it's kind of a sad Mm -hmm. reality where I don't want to be the naysayer and be bad about doing that, but I'm not going to sit there for four hours and, and play that event when I have other things I need to do, especially with the size of this. I'm there with friends. I have people coming in from out of town. I have somebody coming in to stay with me. I have a very chaotic schedule that I got to manage, and it's just that was one example of that. Like mm-hmm. some of the main convention highlights as an example, there's Trade Day, which happens beforehand. There's the Film Festival. Um, looks like there's the Costume Contest, which was mentioned earlier. There's the Consignment Store. That is a whole mantra in and of itself. That is a crazy, um, like the auction house and consignment area. The Exhibit mm-hmm. Hall, the Art Show. There's the Writer Symposium. I know some people are actually working for the Writer Symposium, so they're like helping some of those out, uh, some of those artists out or the authors out. Uh, those are just some of the, the big ticket items. You have things like True Dungeon as another example. Uh, again, it really depends on what you're going there for, whether it's RPGs, whether it's board games, card games. Um, you know, you go there strictly to make friends, strictly to, you know, cosplay, uh, mm-hmm. you know, find occult old things, right? Like, I every year I go and find Star Wars CCG. I find Mage Knights, which are behind me over here. Uh, you know, I look for the things that I grew up with as a kid, right? So action figures, toys, things like that. And they truly can can be there. Now, Gen Con may not be as much. I mean, they have toys, but it's not like the Lexington Toy and Comic Con or, you know, things that are dedicated to, like, action figures. This is going to be a general geekdom. You'll see lots of dice, lots of leather, lots of uh, role-play stuff, almost. I mean, a bunch of LARPing materials, right? Uh, Obviously, RPGs are pretty big. So, I mean, there's, there's tons of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tons of tons of different things for each different convention, and I think overall, you know, in most most cases of nerddom and geekdom, eventually they you know they they, they line up somewhere at some point. But uh, I think it's it's about going and just like enjoying what you want to do, like fi- just finding a purpose to go there, and even if it's just to be like, oh, I'm just going to meet up a friend, meet up with a friend, and hang out and you know play some play some games with them. And if that's all you're gonna want to do, rad. But there's a lot. There's a lot available at most conventions, and uh, some of the stuff go. I mean, you probably have panels up until like 2 a.m. So oh, it's, it's it's literally 40. I think it's the best four days in gaming is their quote, and it's literally four days straight of you can do things 24 hours a day. I believe there's there's stuff it's scheduled beautiful. the entire time. I beautiful. did want to showcase this. This is downtown Indianapolis, um, and if you zoom out, right, Indianapolis is kind of like a gridded city, um, so there's a lot of easy way to get. But once you get into where the convention center is located. Um, which is right, you know, Victory Field and the convention center is in this general ballpark here. Um, there's the Circle Center. There's the uh, there's a bunch of eateries that are around here. Yeah. Oh, no, you're that good. wasn't. Oh, it was to somebody nope. else. Got it. Um, <laughs> but the, when you get in the convention center, there's a bunch of the hotels like the Marriott, the you know different places, and then there's obviously some you know kind of can go to stuff like Mass Ave is a huge. Uh, attraction there's some 16 bit which is uh, like a arcade barcade then you have uh-huh. tappers that's a different version of that that's down kind of in the uh, the fountain square area so the fountain square is over in this general area um there's just literally so much to do there's great restaurants there's a uh, plenty of other things that exist here if you really like the idol drug museum but from a geeky perspective there's you know a lot of these restaurants and places will give uh various uh, discounts or they'll have specific things that will happen during those events so there's just quite a bit of stuff that you can actually see at the physical event itself uh, or, nice. or when you're either there or out and about yeah you, you really I think that's the kind of the thing too when a big event like Gen Con happens I mean you, it's the same way even with ASEN um, when, when a big event ha- comes into town a lot of places in the general area will be on board for it. I mean, they'll they'll truly just kind of, even if they've never had a sale for a nerd thing a day in their life. It's the second <laughs> Gen Con comes to town, they're just like they're gonna want to come to the general area around the convention center. We are located there. We have opportunities for this. And so, 
Um, I think it's I think it's great that it, it's just kind of something that the entire the entire city kind of gets involved in, and I think it's really nice. So I kind of wanted to jump over to the exhibit hall. This is the map of that. I know I'm kind of half off because of where I got me in the the actual video. And that's fine, but um, the exhibit hall is is really larger than life i mean it's to, huge to, to understand huge. what one square means so this 1337 as an example that i believe is a 10 foot by 10 foot square so when you zoom out here right asmodee a big game manufacturer piazzo upper deck these these have you know that's like 10 20 30 40 50 by 50s like this is probably a mm -hmm. 50 by 50 booth that's probably like a 70 by you know 50 or something right so you they pay more for those right but there are you know a whole bunch of stuff in here um and this is just the exhibit hall um in yeah. the guidebook which uh is here if i go to page 20 because i looked for this earlier so i didn't have to fight for it um inside of this this is the like larger exodus of the convention so like in here this is that convention center exhibit hall piece that you were mm -hmm. just looking at and that's at the upper crest of of that location then you have down here you have all these different like ravensburger has like demo rooms and special events and there's like you know main stage for different things all these are different areas as well uh, then you get more into like here's the second half of the convention and for those that have never been there when you come through this back door over here um it allows you to come in and then you can go into this like main area which is actually like an open gaming hall and this is like the front concourse where the west plaza and the huge. jw so this is just all open gaming this is like literal tables where uh i'm going to imagine i was looking for flesh and blood earlier i found them in the exhibit hall but i have not found them in here but like there's games workshop you know that's a predominant mm -hmm. uh name in the the, the ecosystem pokemon uh, upper deck. Oh, there it is. Legend story right there. So they are. Oh my God. They're right between whiz kids and Bandai. Talk about a sandwich. Like that's, yeah, no that's kidding. excellent. Right. And they are right smack next to magic. So what's going to happen here, right? You're going to have people that are the magic looking over and be like, wow, look at all that flesh and blood stuff going on. Right. So I would imagine that's going to be an insane exhibit to see. Cause from what I've gathered and looked at some of their other, you know, uh, I guess convention photography from some of the other, uh, events they've been at so far, their mm -hmm. setup is is kind of eye-catching it really is so uh that's a good example of that right then there's other stuff down here arcades rpgs I, literally they're kids zone right if you got kids bring your kids do that uh there's i think even sunday's like the cheapest day and they call it like kids day it's uh some, i think that's what they call it but it's typically when most of the kids show up um, right this is another concourse section this is like actually i believe the upper second floor so like up here a good example is like gen con when it first opens it's kind of like a floodgate and these are like the doors that you would see like here here and here is um, that a spa? <laughs> here here and here uh and what you would do wait what where is it what are you talking there's, about there's a spa down at the bottom if you scroll down a little bit oh yeah there's a there's spa, a spa. <laughs> yeah what yeah. that's cool but you can stand up on this upper mezzanine and like even over here, right? This is where they typically do like the card castle donation where people like, you know, bid to throw coins at cards. So you build a bunch of card castles and stuff, like what's where bulk goes to die basically. Uh, so that's like for <laughs> charity work and stuff. But if you're standing up here, you can get those massive shots of like the Gen Con rush crowd coming in on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday mornings. So that's, that's kind of where you get to see those. It's like a secret little hidden gym if you can get in there. Um, you know, you're talking 30, 40,000 people, right? So it, it gets really big. And then My this gosh. little secret hallway here is fantastic, right? This is above, like, this is the second floor. So, like, when you're up here, you can sneak behind the back area, come over to this lobby, come down, and, like, this is all, like, you know, open gaming. This is literally a giant ballroom. Like, this Sagamore ballroom is is hundreds and hundreds of feet. Like, it's super big. We used this for uh, when we were doing PopCon. That was one of the areas we had an event in as well. Uh, wow. PopCon's actually hosted in the same uh, convention suite. Not as big as Gen Con yet, but it is, uh, it's definitely striving to get to that area, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, then there's there's other areas, like this is when you start to zoom out. This is called Lucas Oil Stadium, and this is a, a grander macro view, right? We were just talking about that Marriott, and then you're talking about the convention center, and then over here is Lucas Oil. Gen Con wow. has extended into Lucas Oil, Crown Plaza, Union Station, the Omni, the Hyatt, the West, and the Marriott, and the Marriott Place. All of these contain something for Gen Con. It it wow. literally, <laughs> it literally <laughs> is this city. big, and it's it's programming damn near nonstop. 
Um, wow. and, and that was that circle I was pointing out on the map earlier. So when you think about this, like, right, that's one city block. You're walking one, two, three, four city blocks, if you will. Three, two is the crow flies, but really you're going at an angle. Uh, so there's mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Then on Meridian Street, you got, like, there's some game stores. Like, Good, Ga Good Games is downtown Indianapolis, right? They have stuff going on all weekend. I think I chatted with one of their managers earlier this month to kind of see if they were doing stuff. Um, so they're going to throw stuff. There's a brand new game store that's down there. Uh, in Fountain Square that just opened up called Elf and Moon, so shout out to those guys. That's a that's a downtown one. There's other nice. conventions uh, or other game stores that are going to be represented that are kind of within the Indianapolis area, but they're further away. Uh, and then I went to college down here at the Purdue slash IU campus, which is kind of over in this general ballpark over here, but the Idle Jork Museum and stuff is over this way. There's just, it's it's huge, right? And you can actually go parking, a little uh, secret tip. This little uh, area right here on the map where I'm kind of zooming in where there's Idle Jork Museum, there's an underground parking mm -hmm. lot right here so if you're driving in for a day you can typically get good rates and go there and you have to walk just a little bit to get into the convention but where i also like to park and where i've done every year is right here on like the corner of it's either georgia or meridian there's a there's a entrance to the mall because all this is interconnected on the upper mezzanine so you can walk from inside here to the uh indiana circle center mall and there's a parking garage that is like right above a steak and shake and dick's last resort and the parking there is is really good so uh Hey, so what's up, Riddler Man? So. All about getting good parking. That's kind of the concept, right? Yeah, we got Riddler Man here. Welcome on in. We're uh, we're, we're chit chatting more uh, more fun Gen Con stuff. Yeah, I think parking parking for sure is something that I'm always very very um, I'm very serious about because if you don't find it's good very parking, important. you have to you probably end up having to get a shuttle. And oh, it's uh, you know, <laughs> other stuff. It's a lot, and so there's something it, called Gate Gate Ten. It's actually down. So if I go all the way back up here, Gate Ten is on the opposite side of Lucas Oil. It while it's a good place to go, man. It is a it is an effing nightmare because you're like, at the walk there is like six city blocks, and if you're hauling like a big bag of games at the end of convention, dude, it's just it is a nightmare. Uh, yeah. There's also this Maryland Street pickup place, so I'm assuming that's where the Ubers and people can drop you off. So that's kind of a unique area to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is zooming out here. This is uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, right? This is where True Dungeon lives. And let me tell you, True Dungeon. Um, yeah, I know it needs to be flipped horizontally. I don't. Can I do that in? I don't know how to do that. How to do that in? Well, if you're trying to do it in, uh, like, I guess that would be OBS, right? Well, it'd be my whole. It'd be. I'd have to reverse the video feed, then, wouldn't I? I could do it. I, cer I certainly think you could. We just have yeah. to flip our. If you want to carry names. on conversations, I'll see if I can wizard Absolutely. it. Absolutely, you know I can gab. So, yeah, I think. I, yes, wife. This the sheer size. Oh. The sheer size of, uh, of Gen Con is something that is just really, really no, insane to me. I've never been. Never been to Gen Con, but I'm very excited. I'd hope to go sometime. I want to make it a very, very big point to go next year because I've missed going uh, last year and I can't go this year. So I want to make sure that I'm able to go next year so I can meet up with a bunch of people. It's like it's like Nerd Haven in like the middle of the United States, essentially. So um, very, very. It's just like a seems like there's just so much to do it really is like there's a lot to get lost in but I've, I've actually never played mage knight i don't know what that is i've played mage wars before if you're if you guys are ever aware of the board game mage wars it's a it's a card based um it's a card based tabletop game where you make a deck based out of cards that are in that they give okay, you and Apparently, it's just like you make like a binder of spells right. and you end up making that happen so it's very, very, um, very interesting. I'm curious how it ends up working. I wonder if that worked out because I just flipped us and let the wife in because yes, she it, was locked out work. in the backyard. It did so. work. Everything worked. It did work. Excellent. Awesome possum. Hey, look. I broke it. Look at that. We're gaming. We're gaming! But yeah, so this is, um,. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I missed. Sorry, I had to have my like, government issue your piece out. So I uh, know you're good. You're, I was talking about how the size of Gen Con is like absolutely insane to me because like I, I think that ASEN is like pretty big because I mean it's it's the largest anime convention in the Midwest, so it definitely is 
uh, uh, you know, it goes over through several hotels, much like this one does, but to have things inside the Lucas Oil Stadium and inside the convention center and in like 10 different hotels all linked with one another, the entire city is pretty much a part of this convention. I think it's really, really cool. So I very excited. I was also talking about, have you ever heard of a, a board game called Mage Wars? Uh, well, the name sounds very familiar. I have Mage Knight, the board game. So in this studio, on the exact opposite side of where we are, so this this is the far wall on the other side over there, uh -huh. it's about 12 foot wide, it's 8.5 foot tall, it's literally nothing but board games. It's wall to wall, ceiling to floor, it's all board games in, in bookshelves. And I have uh, countless games over there, but one of them is Mage Knight. Uh, I don't think I have Mage Wars, but now I'm going to go look that up. Mage Knight. I'd be curious if it's just a play on Mage Wars, because it's not. It's not. There's minis. Um, essentially, how Mage Wars worked is, it is a game in which you um, you have you, you have a general like a, like playing field essentially, and okay. you have. Um, it looks like, I guess um, like they're tokens uh, that you're able to like Hero Quest. Place it looks like it looks a lot like Hero Quest in some regard. Yes, the, yeah, in a way. It's a, the the whole concept is that you take you you choose a class, and then okay. you get to you. They give you these small binders. They're like the the little tiny like four by four, uh, or binder or the two by two binders that you get for like small collections and TCGs. Sure. And you make sure. a spell book, and in this you use the spell book. And you attack your opponents, you know, with like whatever range, however far ranged you are away, you can set up, um, okay. you can set up like defenses to where like if your opponent's going to go past this defense, they get hit with a spell. It's a very, very interesting game. But let me tell you, two people playing that game is, is, I, I'm, I'm, it's maybe four to six hours. Like you have to commit to pay to playing this game. If you add a third person into that game, there was a point where myself, my best friend, and another best friend of mine, we all were playing, and it was... I think we ended up having to stop the game every night for three days before we were finally done playing our rounds. So it's Twilight Imperium Light? It's, it sounds a whole lot like it, because like, it is just... <laughs> Yeah, there's so much going on and there's so many different tactics you can utilize and I, I still wasn't sure if I was playing the game right but we got it we had a lot of fun with it um, so if, if you have an opportunity to play Mage Wars I highly suggest it because it's a fun little mix between like tabletop and TCG but there's no it's it's more like LCG than TCG because you have I'll all look, the cards I'll look for it when I'm there yeah. now Riddler, Riddler Man asked an interesting question here he says when y'all go to these cons is your goal to find hidden gems or new games so um, I guess I'll go first to, to answer this because my answer yeah. is very simple. Um, this year, my goal is to enjoy myself, which I always do every year. So there's nothing, no change there. But because Flesh and Blood is going to this event, I want to take my camera gear. So I'll have some you know, video and other equipment. And I want to document that expose into the grander scheme of what i'm used to going to gen con i've been going since 2003 it's 2024 i've been going for 21 years i cannot believe i have to say that out loud to myself yeah it's that, crazy. Is a, that is a lot of years but <laughs> but honestly gen con and i collect the guidebooks so there's there's a lot of nuanced stuff here but like you know i'm going to do the same things i do every year i'm going to go visit the vendor hall i'm going to walk around with the the wife my friends we're going to demo stuff if i get a chance to do true dungeon i'm going to do that uh, I always look at, in the vendor hall specifically, I, I always look for good deals. I don't care what game it is, uh, if it's Mage Knight, if it's Flesh and Blood. Like the other day at Half Price Books, right, uh, I found this gem. It's a box of old Star Wars Decipher CCG. It was $50. Oh now, the, the funny thing about this, right, is when I looked inside, because I was only able to do this, they wouldn't let me open it when I was there, I saw the packs <laughs> were inside, right? But... You know, no good story goes without uh, without question, right? So uh, somebody had already opened all of them. But needless to say, um, I haven't gone through this. I was going to actually go through it with Logan from Flesh and Pod because he's, um, mm. he, he's a guy that I know played this game. But, like, I look for things like this. Nostalgia hits, right? I look for that. I look for Pokemon. Um, I look for, you know, things that, that resonate with me. I try new games. This year, as an example, uh, to answer Riddler Man uh, more specifically, I have these game tickets. So I will be demoing a bunch of games. I have Neopets. I have Alter, the TCG. I have Grimpath, TCG. I have um, Star Wars Unlimited, Learn to Play. I have the Flesh and Blood 
uh, Chaos Blitz, and I have some other, I think, Grim Plague Premium or whatever. So I have all those different things on there that I have already scheduled, uh, mostly on one particular day. So that is my quick and hopefully concise enough answer to what I look for when it comes to Gen Con. Again, there are a thousand answers that I could give here because the game plan changes depending on who you're hanging out with. Yep. But that, that's where I'm currently going. So, Alex, what, what do you do when you go to Gen Con? Uh, honestly, going to Gen Con for me would probably be a lot about making sure to try out the new stuff. Because in most cases, uh, if you're going to a LGS to go try the new stuff, you're probably playing into a pretty competitive field. Or you're, you know, you might be like, oh, they might not have like some stuff to give out or may not be so concise on, um, on how to tell you how to play the game. Whereas learn to play events, I mean, these people are, they're trained to teach you and anybody how to play the games. And I think that would be something to, to walk away with a lot of memorable experiences and things that I would like to actually get done. Um, I think that's probably my big deal. Uh, like, I, yeah, I, you know, I've wanted to check out big things on Grand Archive for a while. I've heard a lot of good things about Grand Archive Warlord. was at Gen Con the other day. Yeah, I think Warlord will yeah. be here too. Actually, I thought I had a Warlord demo. Oh no! Did that yeah, not? I, uh oh! Oop, I would oh, double check no. that. Oh would no! Oh but no! But that's, that's that's kind of my whole thing. Is like if if there's something that has piqued my interest or like has had, you know people have been talking about it. Like I'm not a big fan of the concept of the Star Wars TCG, but I would learn to play it if it's available to me and it's like there. You know, I get to walk away with a uh, an understanding of the game and maybe I just need to play it in order for it to happen. A warlord canceled apparently, according to Riddler Man. So. Oh that. wow! I was like, I have a ticket right here, and it says, and I'm looking through this. So, that that's is sad. that is very sad, actually. I was yeah. looking. Maybe that's why they didn't include it in the stuff that came with me. That that answers yeah. that question. Could be. Womp womp womp. But uh -oh. that, but that's kind of what I that's what I look for is new experiences. Um, if I happen, I mean, I don't do a whole ton of shopping outside of, I think. If I'm if I'm spending my money anywhere at a convention, it's normally at the artist alley. It's not normally at regular vendors who are selling their singles or selling you know board games or things like that. It's normally in the artist look, alley. Look at how so big that artist alley is, right? Yeah, it's and, huge. And that, that artist alley will contain every art. Like Mark Poole is there multiple years. Like I mean, I literally bought this this particular piece of artwork here. It's a steampunk oh. style magic. Uh, I think it's a servitor or something, right? I got this at Gen Con a couple years ago because I liked the steampunk aesthetic in the library. I got it from the art show. I got it from one mm -hmm. of the artists. Um, you know, you can have people sign cards. Oh, you can have people alter cards. There's wall scrolls. There's every anime thing you could imagine, right? It's just there's a billion and one follies, lollies, and lick em lollies, and you just got to pick what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and honestly... I'll talk briefly about how I would approach the, the dealer's room. So let's say you walk in down here, and this is number 100. You can do the crazy raccoon bounce all over the place or try to get to the day one sales because there will be events and sales that will happen day one um, right when you join in uh, that if you are not the first in those lines, that special promo product thing will be gone. Lorcana is a yeah. great example of that crazy shit yep. show. Uh, I guess I can actually say that because we're far enough in the video it may not get demonetized, yeah. but <laughs> yes. it was a literal shit show. I, I shit you not, that was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. I, it, I mean, that, that hall, right? If we zoom back out to that map, where am I at? Page 20-something? Let me, let me get the yeah. big convention map. Yeah, like, there when it is. You, when you... And that's not even going to do it justice. i got to go out further. Hold on. Well, like, the Ravensburger one, I think, was right down there, right? So. Yeah, but the way this worked is like in this hall down here up here so like this is just the bottom corner right there's actually another door uh -huh. down over on here that i'm not even seeing but like it the line went from here all the way down all the way up and back and forth and like it was just it was it was a freaking mess to get to a booth that was like right in where next to this family fun pavilion place is located uh -huh. it was it was just crazy uh, and that really affected a lot of the booths in the front right because it was just so madness that you could not walk across this front so Hopefully that won't happen this year. They kind of fixed it day two or day three. But 
yeah. you can go with the methodical approach of walking down a row, going down 100 all the way to the end, going to the next and coming down or whatever. And you'll get into these weird areas where like you're like, I don't really care about Piazza, so maybe you'll make a U-turn here and come up. But then you kind of can miss some stuff. But honestly, even walking at a fairly brisk pace, you're not going to get through the vendor hall in one day. Like, it's just not possible. That's well, wild. It is, I love it that. is possible <laughs> if you just go like, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. And right. that's, that's all if you do. Not, if you're not stopping and actually, like, looking at things inside the the booths, I'm sure there's there's far, far, far. I mean, just all of that alone Copium is level 9,000 with this, man. It's super, super, uh, it's almost overwhelming. The amount yeah, of some, something to point out, too, is Entrepreneur's Avenue. Always check out Entrepreneur's Avenue. That's always a good place uh, to kind of see the up-and-coming stuff. And mm -hmm. frankly, you know, another pro tip here, don't necessarily blindly give your money to people. Like, there will be a lot of people that will be like, hey, if you buy this, you get this or whatever. Like, look, eBay is yeah. going to be here, right? So now that we know that eBay is going to be again, like, they had a crazy big booth. And actually, last year I met uh, Tanner from uh, Cryptid or Cryptic is, uh, is the game he was running. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think that that's happening anymore. I think he stepped down. But, like ebay had like you know these like hide and go seek things you could find stuff but they had this like big castle and it was like a multi-tier story thing um yeah. it's just there's a lot of really really interesting stuff but like on this back wall you know you can kind of hang out back here there's like restrooms and stuff but you you could also just literally find a place to sit and people watch for for a period of time they won't let you block alleys and stuff but um i think renegade is the one that does um uh everdell it maybe it might be them, but they have like the big, they had a big mm -hmm. tree one year. There's just, there's beautiful stuff. And when you look at like the ceiling, you'll see all the, uh, the aisles. So if you ever get lost, right, and you're on a cell phone with somebody or you got a walkie talkie, however you want to communicate, I recommend one of the two. Um, you can be like, hey, I'm at aisle 100. So you know you're going to be over here. And if they're like, hey, I'm at aisle 2200 or 2200, they're way the hell over here. So to get to there to there, that's a 15 minute walk. Right. That's through a long through time. people. You know, and that's one of the things you got to consider, right, is is this area of text where this is at right here. This is where the exhibit hall, uh, this is that opening area where you would kind of be able to walk around. So mm -hmm. it's kind of jutted in a bit. And then down here would be where in the bottom corner over by this general ballpark uh, is where you would get to going to the open gaming section where Flesh and Blood has their booth. And I looked earlier, Flesh and Blood is actually in the middle here. It's I think it's 17 something because they're actually underneath Flesh and Blood, 1739. So they're going to be located. It's a ten by twenty, and they're uh, they're going to be smack dab in the middle here. Uh, so eBay's up here, just a smack, you know, boom, damn, jive over here, and they're going to be right above Restoration Games, basically smack dab in the middle of the floor. So uh, I don't remember what nineteen twenty nine is, but some of these really long ones like this, these are always fun because sometimes these are like the bits guys. Actually, I'm going to go look up nineteen twenty one. Can I find that nineteen twenty nine? Uh, Ar Archeon games, so they they must have done something interesting this year. I've not that's not right. a typical booth layout that you you see. Um, so Those I'm normally curious. reserved for for certain places, right? Well, I mean, you had to at that point. You're buying out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's like ten booths. So yeah. I mean, that's that's a lot. Um, I, there's just so much to see, man. There's just so there's much a lot. To see. It's a lot. I definitely have to make it. I have to make it a. A, a point to make sure to go next year because I, I would love to go. I'd love to be able to go and, and hang out and do stuff. Well, until they cut pry it for my cold dead fingers, like it's going to hopefully be here in Indianapolis. I know I don't get to make those decisions, but like, oh no, I is... think it's I think it's pretty rooted in Indianapolis, which is rad. I mean, like it's it's close enough to where I could quite literally like f f fly home and then end up going end up going to to there. Oh. But I'd probably just end up getting an Airbnb in Indianapolis. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, you know, if I don't have somebody staying here, there's a chance that I could even save you the money and you could probably crash in the downstairs room that we got here. You know, it's a, hey. that's, that's an option as well. Well, um, yeah. you know, because there's just, you know, there there's a lot of a lot of things that can happen, and especially if you're driving it now. And the good thing for where I'm at, I'm so close to the airport that for me, it's like a five-minute drive to the airport. So if somebody comes in, I, I've always played the, the concierge service. I'm the one driving to pick people up. So it's I've right. always been kind of a middle ground stop. It's It's super fun. Um, mm -hmm. That's well. That's that's very very uh, very nice of you. I'll certainly uh, if you if you happen to have spots open and it ends up working out, I'll. Uh, sure I am make sure sad they that they that. did they cancel their Kickstarter too. Now I'm I'm really gonna have to look into the uh, Warlord. <laughs> look deep into, into Warlord, right? Yeah, I was really Warlord looking forward. Canceled Gen Con 2024. 
Wow, uh, you're typing in the exact same thing I'm typing in. Yep. Huge uh, event canceled. Term. Due to delays, we are unable to receive product in time for Gen Con and will need to cancel the sealed pre-release and into the Accordlands draft event. We'll be refunding tickets and replacing these events with constructed Ancients and Cube draft. Ancient format events will allow full-colored proxies. The Learn to Play is Ancient Championship, Cube Drafts, and Alliance pods will continue as planned. While we're disappointed that we can't run our initial scheduled events, we remain excited to spend the convention with everyone teaching and playing Warlord. Oh, so they will still be there? Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like they'll still be there. They're just not doing specifically the sealed pre-release and the Into the Accordlands draft. Okay, see, I'm really Which curious. I'm assuming because... Into the Accordlands is what their set, their new recent set is, and yeah. So it looks like, I mean, I'm looking at their schedule right now, and it looks like they still have a whole bunch of events up. Well, I am trying, it says this event sold out. So according to my thing, now well, I do have. Is it is it Warlord Saga of the Storm? That's correct? Yeah, Warlord Saga okay. of the Storm, Kingswood Games. I mean, according to this, I have a ticket, two tickets, one for myself and one for my better half. It says ticket method electronic, so maybe that's why. Is I don't have, I'm gonna have to find a way to figure out that one's electronic, and I have another one here called Union Arena that's also electronic. So maybe I still get to do that learn to play event, but I'm mm -hmm. not gonna do the other ones because if I go to Kingswood Games, um, there's a lot that are still sold out on that. So hopefully I still get to demo the game because that'll be fantastic if I do. Because that's one of the reasons right. I wanted to. Yeah, you know, it's the whole reason to go to Gen Con, experience the things you don't get to normally experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that concept a lot. And there's, and there's so much. There is so, so, so much in just one hall for you to look over. And I think it's going to be very... Um, yeah, I think if it's your first time at Gen Con, again, it's best to just know what you're getting into. Go check out some board games that you like. Go check out some TCGs you like. Uh, maybe you're just looking to hang out with a friend and, and buddy up with them and check out the stuff that they're looking to check out. Heck but yeah. uh, it's no. it's it's a good time if you're if you're on a lover of all things nerd, you know. I will point out that there is an event here called Flesh and Blood TCG Unofficial Meetup. This is something that I I kind of actually sent off a request to do this back in January before I really knew LSS was going to do as big of a thing as they were doing. I didn't have a clue, and it got randomly approved within the last like five to ten days. I had no idea. I checked my email and I was like, "Holy crap!" It's actually so I'm scrambling now to make some freebie decks. Um, it says it costs $2 to get in because I didn't, couldn't find a way to make it free because I think Gen Con requires for every hour they require something. But it's going to be um, in the Weston uh, Senate 2 location. It's on Friday at 7 p.m. Um, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to bring a bunch of random stuff. I'm going to do the same thing like Riddler Man uh, does. I'm going to bring uh, a box of random cold foils. Uh, so if you show up, um, I'll give you something just for hanging out. Uh, bring some crack bobbles, help, you know, meet some people. If I got some decks, I'll try to give out some stuff. Uh, with the fact that they're releasing the first strike decks, right? The those where I'm going to point people to. But if people yeah. did not purchase those decks, I'll probably be able to give away some of the the freebie, you know, like that Phi deck that I built the other day when we were working on yep. something. Like I can do stuff like that, give those away. I have plenty of bulk. Hell, I might even bring a box of bulk with me and just hand them a giant stack of cards. Like I have these, like you know, these 300 count or 100 count, uh, 200 count boxes. I might yeah, just shove 200 random cards in here and be like here you go it's like a free booster pack it's not like you know gonna necessarily maybe make the best deck it may not be 100 percent cohesive but i can try to give you something here's an experience for the game uh still go spend ten dollars and buy the deck at the lss booth but here you go this is my youtube channel here's some stuff it's a little bit of self-promoting but it's also trying to get the community together uh, i've heard you know as an example i think i heard dm armada is going to be coming i don't know if any mm -hmm. other major content creators are going to be there uh, I think Logan from Flesh and Pod is going to be there, so I'm going to try to maybe uh, coerce them into uh, possibly joining me at this event if I can actually politely uh, indicate that they, they can show up and we can just have a, just a good old hangout session. Um, there you go. So that would be my hope. So that's my little pitch spiel on that. Hopefully it is uh, all within reason. And, again, if at any point LSS does hear this and they don't want that to happen, I will gladly cancel it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a good steward of the game, but at the same time, if it doesn't match their, uh, you know, opinion of what they want to do, that's, that's also fine and dandy. I just... Uh, if I'm allowed, I'm allowed, and apparently if it got approved, somebody must have, you know, asked him and they were happy with it, so I, I, I'm assuming I, it's good. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know enough about, like, the whole policy on it, but, like, I would only imagine that you being able to just go there and talk with people about Flesh and Blood and hand out cards from your own collection to be like, hey, here's some bulk to get you started, here's a small 100-count box, here's a beginner deck for you to go, 
like i don't think they're gonna be upset about it i think especially if you're still just like if you want something a little bit more like c like complete you can go buy the first strike decks at the flesh and blood uh booth which you know, they'll be available and, uh, I was going to say, I was going to bring my whole box of, I got a bunch of the uh, Blitz decks. So I was going to, you know, that's why this big bag is important, right? So at the mm -hmm. end of that day, I'm going to go to my car that has a trunk. I'm going to go grab the, the things I need. And then that way I'm not having to call, hold, hold those around all day, right? Because, like, this is going to, if this is full of cards, it's going to be heavy as hell. Like, mm -hmm. to carry that around all day, it's just, it, it's counterintuitive. So my idea with that is I'm going to carry around the things I need and then go and grab you know, some demo decks, things like that. That way I'm not having to carry it. And then, you know, if people show up, great. If they don't, then, well, you know, there was an experience and uh, you get to kind of go from there. But hopefully we'll have some people show up. So there we go. Right. Yeah. No, it sounds like it'll be a great time. I think uh, I think hopefully you get a lot of people show up. You know, if anything, yeah, I'm sure even if you just hang out around the freaking Flesh and Blood booth and you're just like, hey, you know, you can probably just give them to the people at the booth and be like, hey, if you want to hand these out to people, you can do that too. But yeah, I... I think I could, but I also think that does get into some gray territory because I think there's a lot of rules on what they can do with uh, as a paying booth. And, you know, I, I don't want to yeah. screw with whatever LSS is doing directly. I'm still going to go up to LSS. I know I'm already spending to buy the first strike decks. I mine right. the Azalea deck. Um, I don't know what else I'm really going to be able to buy from them, to be completely honest. Again, I'm getting the Blaze promo, but, like, um, I, unless they have booster boxes for sale, I mean, I would find it silly they wouldn't, right? They'd probably be selling some of that stuff, but... Uh, as a as a person that has already explained in my you know latest video, I, I have my player set of like these are my legendaries right. So this is one of almost every legendary. I I don't need much more sealed product at this point. So uh, I'm right. not really 100 percent positive I'm going to be buying a lot of boxes. But if I find a really good deal like a bright lights for 50 bucks, but obviously LSS isn't going to want to sell their flagship yeah, stuff for, for that price. <laughs> so you got to find it. You got to find a different single seller that's a Gen Con to, to do yeah, something like that. I'm gonna. And that's kind of interesting, right? So they're also, uh, I remember back in the day, there was a lot of rules on like, depending on the uh, vendor, right? So like, um, I think Dominion is a card game. I forget who makes it, but like there were rules around who could sell their particular products. It's kind of like a non-compete kind of thing. Like, hey, at Gen Con, you got to go to this booth to buy it. So I'm actually curious mm -hmm. if, um, if, as an example, LSS may only be selling specific products. So there's like a restriction on those, which would make sense because they're not, nobody else is going to have the, the, the first strike decks or the Azalea decks. But Troll and Toad or Card Kingdom, those guys, they might probably still have some flesh and blood stuff. But frankly, I will be completely transparent. I have video of this last year. I never really released it because to me it, it kind of seemed bad. But like I went around to every booth and I was asking, Do you carry flesh and blood? Do you have flesh and blood? Do you have this? And like nobody had much of anything. I think I found a couple of Tales of Aria boxes. Actually, that's where I bought the two uh, that I have behind me. I opened mm -hmm. one and I got a, uh, a, a Corsham, a Fabled, so I was pretty happy about that. Uh, but again, like the quantity of flesh and blood years before and what maybe i'll see this year that's one of the reasons i'm kind of glad i documented the years before because this year when i walk around and i look at some of these card vendor booths right especially as i go into that secondary area where it's technically the gaming hall where the flesh and blood has their legend story booth in the middle of hall b underneath match the gathering you know right. there are vendors that are in there that while they say Magic the Gathering, right, they're partnered with Channel Fireball, as an example, which I know they're not really in this world for us anymore, but, like, those would be the booths that would exist at those areas, and you could go purchase cards from them. And there will be a plethora of people selling Magic. Uh, I'll be curious this year to see Star Wars Unlimited, right? That's a big game. Lorcana, and just all sorts of stuff, because each of these games are so diverse now. you got sorcery and, uh, you know, everything, right? Like, the diversity, the time to be in the gaming industry is is now. Like, there's just so much to see. Pretty good. There's a lot. There's a lot available. I mean, and I think the thing is, right? You know, a couple of years ago, you had all the the Kickstarter games that were going off, and they were all getting their booths all set up at Gen Cons and other gaming events, and they all, you know, a decent amount of them all failed. But I think even still, you know, people are Grand Archives doing really well, One Piece doing really well, Digimon still doing well. You've got enough TCGs in that general area, startup or not, that you could be playing a new card game every single day, every other hour of the day, and still probably not end up learning to play every single one of them. And I think it's it's a really good time for people who are getting into TCGs and, and want to find a hobby that is, um, you know, that, that speaks to them in that sense, whether they want to play something competitively or they want to find something a little bit more um, like co-op kind of game style. Um, there's going to be something for everybody. I think that's really the the best part. And if you don't like any of the card games, you can go 
play Dungeons and Dragons there. I, you know, I'm sure they have like play like module events where you can go play Dungeons and Dragons at these places, and um, you can go play war. You can go learn to play Warhammer. You can play, learn how to play 40k or 40k. Or that'll to, that'll make you lose your friends real quick. I love it. It'll, but, it'll yeah, make you lose your money too, apparently. So it's, it's, it's plastic crack, man. I have so much 40k sitting over there. It's unbelievable. I. Uh... <laughs> I'm a I'm a filthy degenerate Tyranids player. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, well, you me. know what? So my uh, my best friend's a filthy degenerate Tyranids player, and he 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 when when Magic came out with the the Tyranid uh, commander deck, he was as giddy as he could ever be because he was just like, this is the best thing ever. I guess it's Frankly. now time to at least maybe open a random pack since we're. Oh my God! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Do you, do you have a random pack? No, I do. I do. I do. Are we okay. pack warring? Do you? Okay, Dust Till Dawn or, or Artemis Vale? <laughs> I'm going to say Dust Till Dawn. Okay, all right, bet. Dust Till Dawn. That's what we're doing. Okay. We're, we're, we're pack warring. So a -AS ASMR. Well, ASMR? Yes, uh, I guess, well, technically, I probably should have had you open the other one because this is, what, uh, 15, 16 cards? How do you even pack yeah. war in, in, in this? So format? I'm not too sure how you pack war, essentially, but I'm assuming what it is is whoever gets the highest rarity thing out of this wins. Oh, Although I'm not getting your cards and you're not getting mine, I assume. So Ex expedite. I got over overloop. I, I've not actually looked at what we're getting here. S Jumpstart. I, I was trying to read, but it's so far away. This is right. dive through data. In gotta get through all this time. Hey, that rune chant. Let's go. Zero to Speaking fifty. Of, got a a soul Step cleaver. Up. What if I what if I pull an AP right now? I would. I pop crazy. It's a Vantum Vantum Wraith. Mini force field. Did I get to anything fun yet? What Deathly whale. I got an Evo Sentry. Cleansing oh, light. That's my foil. No, that was wrong. No majestics. Got, did you get I a majestic? Gigawatt. I did get a majestic. Magnetic shock wave. You win. You're the winner. And, and a expedit. Exploited. Oh, and yep. apparently, nope. That's just a base legs. So hey, I got a I got a mechanologist. Uh, Target hero chooses X equipment they control and you choose one from among them. That hero must defend your attack with that. That's actually so fantastic. I keep forgetting that my camera is focus plane like right here in back, so like uh -huh. I have to like it's it's not an auto this this camera is not autofocus, so it's not <laughs> It's okay, my camera also isn't autofocus. One of these days. One of these days we'll get there. But yeah, Well, that's I, I love Del Soldon. I need to open more of it. I'm planning to hopefully buy a case of it sometime in the near future. Maybe for my birthday this year I'll buy a case of Dustal Dawn. Yeah, I think if I were to buy a case it's going to be the unpopular opinion, but I'm going to go with uh, Bright Lights, because I, I well, just... You're, you're a mechanologist, Ed, you know? Like, you you yeah. like that. Man, I, I almost feel like I should... Uh, I, I, I want to talk so much about the uh, the new Rosetta stuff, but I, I, I know that doesn't necessarily directly relate to Gen Con, so I'm going to try to... Yeah, if, if you're going to save it for, you know, the, if, if you can, you know, say anything, at least they talked about the first strike decks and how they're going to be, they're going to be great access to new players, and uh, according to the keynote, they're not going to be things that people are going to say, this is the most busted card ever, I'm going to need it in my classic constructed deck. According to Brian Gottlieb, there's nothing crazy powerful in the first strike decks but that's what you say when there's something powerful inside of a deck so i'm picking them up anyway because i like the concept of it but uh i i'm you know i i like flesh and blood so it is what it is so bring your deck boxes bring your card sleeves bring a binder mm -hmm. bring your battery pack bring a form of entertainment if you get stuck in a line like this is my old game boy actually well technically this is a new a newly made Game Boy because I built it. Oh wow! From the, oh my from gosh! Kit. That's beautiful. Yeah. Holy it crap! It has CNC. It has CNC. Gorgeous. You uh, built that? Yeah, it's a kit. You can you can basically build it all together. It's called a uh, Funny Ways, uh, but this is an FPGA version. So like, there's actually a hidden menu you can do like crazy stuff. Like, oh nice. Game... Okay, so you can just like ROM hack kind of stuff, right? So. Uh, technically, but it's more for like I guess honestly the old Game Boy that I had. Uh, I don't even think it's back anymore. Uh, it's broken. It's totally like busted in half. It's it's bad. So like, but I, I can now play like I replace the batteries in these. Let's so, go. Um, replace those. So I you know keep something with you that you can keep yourself entertained because it never hurts to have something to keep yourself. I mean, phones obviously do a lot. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, that's. Um, oh, also one more thing uh, to note uh, before anything else. Something that I always see happen with TCG players, whether whatever event they're going to. 
please, if you are going to be leaving your cards inside of your car for some reason, I, I understand it's probably a pretty safe area. Do not just leave them in the front seat of your car. If you have a backpack, put it in your trunk. Uh, don't. I, I will go do one step further it. on this. Uh, that is actually a really good thing, and I had it in my notes. I'm surprised I didn't talk about it, but literally, don't, not don't trust people. People inherently are good, but there are bad actors out there. Don't go Absolutely. take your bag, and if I had this bag sitting behind my chair, and I don't have my foot through this strap or this, yep. you know, zipped up, do not do stuff where it gives the opportunity for a criminal to just say, I'm going to leave with this, right? There are a lot of people watching. Obviously, you heard probably about the Gen Con thieves that got caught last year, right? There's a lot of cameras yep. or stuff. You know, they'll get people, but don't give them the opportunity. Just, you know, I think a word of wisdom there is, you know, don't invite unintended uh, issues if you don't really need to do that because it's just not useful for anybody so exactly it's it's just not it's not a good time and I, I think it's just it's wild the amount of times that i hear somebody went to go travel to some event and they had their bag in their car and then they got their window smashed and got their stuff stolen and have to make a whole twitter thread about it because this happened to them when it could everything if you have it on you right same deal right put it, put put the strap around your leg or make sure that it's like, a, you can even put it to where it's in the front of your body. It doesn't matter if you look weird, whatever. It's the fact that you're keeping your stuff safe. And that's what's important because a lot of Security people go to these through events, obscurity. They know, people know that people are walking around these conventions with tens of thousands of dollars worth of product in most cases. And sometimes it's just diapers in a bag. But in most cases, it is some kind of product that they brought with them to go to this event and you can tell if, if you have a really nice backpack and it you, looks full as hell they probably have a lot of stuff inside of there that you could probably resell if you know what you're doing and that is why you need to be very very careful because it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't you could say it's the safest most secure place in the entirety of the world someone somewhere will find an opportunity to take advantage of that and will, you know, attempt to steal from people. So it's uh, it's always good to be cautious. Obviously, if you're with a group of people that you know, it's always great. Um, they'll look out for you and you'll look out for them. But um, the biggest thing that I always see is that people leave their bags in their car because they might not need it yet or, you know, their events later and they don't need to go walking around with their bag right now. They leave it in their car while they're, you know, they're in a parking lot and then it gets smashed open and they get the stuff stolen by the time they go back to their car. So. Yep, just keep all your stuff on you. That's the best approach you can yep. do. And obviously, you know, use the same thought process that if you were just, you know, in any place, right? Don't go dark alleys. Don't go anywhere yep. by yourself. Have a buddy system. Honestly, it's always best to know the uh, areas which are, you know, the convention is typically a safe space. There are people at Gen Con that wear, like, specific color vests that are, like, leaders. I have a couple of friends that are, uh, close friends with mine that are in those positions at Gen Con. They're like team leaders, and you can go up to them and say, this person's harassing me, this person's following me, I got this, you know, this problem, that. And they have communication, and they're going to, you know, they will handle that stuff. They are excellent experts, and I, I have full faith that they know what they're doing. Like, I would I would trust them uh, pretty much, it, it, you know, with everything. So, yeah, yeah I 100% concur with that, so. Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's on conventions. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm going to look at my notes one more time, but I think that is everything Gen Con in a nutshell. I mean, um, make sure you, yeah, yeah, you know, Indianapolis is, is fun. There's lots of things to do. Don't overextend mm -hmm. yourself. Uh, if, if uh, Absolutely, the one thing you take away from this is just enjoy, but don't try and, and just go insane. Oh, I didn't even get to here. I'm going to go back to this last piece here because this is the piece that really is i'm going to just disappear in my head because i don't even care uh when we get past we talked about true dungeon but we totally skipped this section down here this is the beginning of the um the uh the stadium oh god the stadium yeah i was like i can't think of the word right. it's that's right there but 
inside of this, this is where all the food courts and stuff are, the food trucks. This is an amazing oh. place. Yeah, I have to talk about the food trucks. So there's going to be like a party, covered seating this year, and some food trucks. This is amazing. This whole street will be shut down, and it's right between the two, so it's an easy walk across. These are stairs, by the way, so you'd like walk out. Or you can take the underground tunnel, technically, which is where True Dungeon is. And then once you get into that, look at this, games library, all these different you know areas that are in here. These are... Um, I, I had demoed board games in here, and this is literally a football field. Like, you are staring at a football field. It does not yeah, look for crazy. context, but that is how big this is. Um, then there are different suites available to do things. Like, there are upper concourse suites. It is the entirety of this, right? Uh, it's totally amazing. There is just a grand old amount of time worth of stuff and again God, so much i love too it. much too much to do now this is some of the jw myriad this is typically where i would say most of the anime events type stuff happen in, in years past this is mm -hmm. kind of where that is um i mentioned earlier i think i said that mine is in the weston senate too so like uh that's the marriott this is the hyatt regency uh, this is another Marriott, you know, page. Here's another Marriott page worth of stuff, right? Several There's the Marriott's. Omni, which is a bunch of mini games, LARPs, and RPGs. And then I got put into what they called the Island of Misfit Toys. Union Station, by the way, is beautiful. <laughs> they actually have a, um, uh, it's an old, like a kind of a, well, it's a ticket station, I guess, where all the people used to get stuff. But it's a giant area, and they host, like, at night, the events that are in there, like a ballroom uh, hmm. kind of a thing. And it looks like I'm in Weston Senate 2, so I'm guessing Congress, this Capitol, Maybe you're upstairs. Senate 2, so I'll be, in, I'll be in this one here. So, oh, look, it's the Skywalk. So that means right across the Skywalk, just boom, right there. So after hours, I'll be hanging out uh, right there from, probably I'll be in there a little bit early, because I don't know what's before me, so I'll have to see if there's something in there before. I'll try to figure that out. But um, Friday, 7 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, I'll be in there for at least an hour. I could have scheduled it longer, uh, but really, even if it is longer, you just go out to the area out here and just hang out with people. Like it's that's the mm -hmm. whole beauty. And from where that skywalk goes to, that goes to that second floor I was talking about earlier. And there's plenty of open space up in that area. You can sit down. And you will find people sitting literally in the breezeways and everywhere else. They'll be sitting down, just hanging out, playing games. You know, you'll see games of werewolf. You know, all sorts of fun stuff. All just Gosh, completely. All it sounds place. like sounds like so much fun, man. I'm sad I'm missing this year. I really want to. I really want to go. I'll, I'll go next year. Next what's year I'll the, make what's it. What's the a, What's the hour um, drive? How long does it take to get here? 14 hours from where you're at. 14. It's about 14. Well, it'd be a little bit more if I was going to go to. to to Indiana, so it'd probably be like 16, 17 hours, maybe. So, I, I it'd be it'd be a bit of a drive. Obviously, I'd probably end up just flying if it was going to be by myself. But uh, even still, I uh, I made the uh, silly mistake of uh, inviting my my parents out to go see me during the same weekend. So, hey, I, look uh, at that event partner. I have things happening. LSS yeah, is there an it event is. partner. See so hyped man it's gonna be such a fun time this I really is hope a fun everybody game who's too. going is gonna have a great time root yeah it's a board game sun king that's actually where i'm gonna be meeting uh logan on wednesday hmm. night he said that he'll be uh probably meeting so hopefully that's not go. tmi but i don't think you'll mind if other people show up but uh yeah sun king brewery is is super super cool um those fun chips Wild Bills, they go. We're already all set, it boys, right bills. here. Ding, ding, ding. God, oh, man, I miss Wild Bills so much. I'd, I'd fly out to Indiana just for Wild Bills. This Swag. is some of the best root beer I've ever had in my life. Social Cantina, that looks like a Jurassic Park uh, logo. Yeah. Ooh, this is a pretty little, I don't know what that is. Look at that. Roll so for fun. initiative with Ale four with cinnamon. cinnamon and lactose. Oh, boy. They're just that adding sounds... lactose into things these days official merchandise you can get bcw bcw is going to have a lot of interesting stuff and there's also like gen con dice you can get you know looks like there's a gen con play mat here cool stuff inc has something That's uh neat. dispel always does dice although i'm going to be biased and say that my wife does butt dice either as good if not better because i enjoy her dice because she makes a lot of them and puts a lot of blood sweat and tears into them so that's uh that's there things dryad tea i think she bought some of that last year that's some pretty good stuff uh, there's metallic dice now. I mean, it's just everything. Norse Foundry, they're, wow. uh, they're an old, I would say, not maybe not partners, the too big of a word, but I made some stuff for them uh, back in the day for some displays and holders. Uh, they're good folk. Um, their stuff is in a lot. I've seen them at a lot of events, and their stuff is at a lot of local LGSs, uh, so they do some mm -hmm. pretty good good work. There's that official Crystal, Cal Crystal Castle Gen Con dice set, so every year you get a dice set. 
that's released. They have different, uh, you know, themes for each year, and you can get that's all those. Fun. So there's a Christmas ornament, it looks like, this year. WizKids is doing some sort wow. of game piece. That's a drinking oh, man. game. Dr Heroes, yeah, of Heroes, Heroes of Arcadia. Heroes of Arcadia. I love that. Oh that sounds God. that sounds exciting. This is a good time. This is a good time. I genuinely think if you if you haven't been to a convention, Gen Con is definitely a place to check out. It's it kind of just envelops most of everything. And there's your Neo Neopets logo. Uh, so I'm Neo really wondering what this Neopets TCG is going to be like because there's a lot of people in my generation who are who are very tied to Neopets, and the fact that they came out with the TCG in 2024 is insane to me. I'd genuinely be curious to see how to play. Like, that would be something I'd go to a booth to go check out, because... I, I will definitely kind of look out for my video on it, because I'm going to be recording my demo. Yes, yes, um, let me know. That is that is going to be... I, I'm very, very excited to see how it plays. I'd be very curious how, uh, how it takes... Oh, there you go. Reusable collector's cups. Purchase a cup at any, cup at any concession stand, twenty-two dollars, and a dollar refill. Again, another valid good thing is, even so if good. you get food elsewhere, you can get these refillable cups, and they'll pay for himself. So, really, your first drink is twenty-two dollars. Your second drink is uh, eleven dollars. Well, it's actually more like you know eleven fifty because you got to take twenty-three and divide it twenty-four on your fourth drink divided by three. It it, it maths out. To, if you get four or five, six drinks, it pays for itself. Now, a hack that some people have done is you get one drink for you and your significant other, and you bring your own bottle or cup, right? And then you pour it in something else, and you go back up to get a refill. Uh, I know they frown upon that, but trust me, there's plenty of people that do it. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's there's it's a lot of still, Let me tell you, if I'm able to walk around an anime convention with a bunch of uh, rum and uh, and lemon juice or le or lemonade in a uh, in a water bottle, I think you could find a way to. To, oh. to get your drinks into something else. Here's your Entrepreneur's Avenue. Look, Alpha Clash is going to be in Entrepreneur's oh, Avenue. Um, let's see here. Anybody else that makes uh, Arcane Library sounds somewhat Nothing familiar. I can see. It's all yeah. the kind of new Triceratops new. games. Um, I mean, I will say that the risk with, with these kind of things, now not with Alpha Clash, they've kind of proved themselves at that point, but... I backed a couple of Entrepreneur Avenue stuff that was kind of through a Kickstarter kind of a thing, and it turned out to be a real shit show because basically I never got the product and I was out quite a bit of money. So Oof, yeah, you know, it, it happens. Buy, get, look at to look into buying the things that you want to buy first before trying to to back a company that might not be good to its promises. Oh, I haven't heard of this one, Universe of Legends. I'll have to kind of find them. It's a trading card game, so. Um, that's in that. That looks like this is the little brochure on who some of these people are. So mm -hmm. um, this one here is a Soul Master TCG. You'll probably notice that I would say most of these are probably trading card games. So yep. this one is a trading card game. Universal Legends, a trading card game. Um, this is a big old game table. That looks oh pretty cool. Oh my god, that's yeah. crazy. Those are like at least seven thousand dollars, right? Yeah, Wormwood makes something. I mean, very similar. Or there's quite a I bit of. I, I'm a big fan of Wormwood tables. I think I think at the second I have an opportunity to first own a house and then get a Wormwood table, that's what I'm doing because there's a lot of people I could entertain with a Wormwood table. Now this is not a worm. Oh, I'm not even on video here. I gotta go back. This is not a Wormwood box. But this is a another company. This was, uh, I believe, it was Master Monk. I don't know if they're still around anymore. But this was a, it's an RPG box where it's oh. multiple pieces. So like this oh. builds into a tray with magnets, oh. and then this is a collapsible dice tower. I won't build it right now, but that goes on it. And then this is your dice, and then inside I have some of the wife's dice that she's made uh, for me. So that goes. And then in the top here, you have this medical metal piece you could write on, but I have a pen and a, a pencil and a dry erase. But that all packs down inside of the whole thing like that. And then, you know, that's what I, that's one of the items I carry with me to my D&D nights. Yeah, that's fun. That's absolutely fun. I love wood. I'm going to buy one of those gaming tables. Do you rather, I'm telling you, man, Wormwood Tables is a dream of mine. It's a dream. They're so beautiful. I, I, I I've been even, in, I, it's great. It's great. I've been in the process of making my own because I have the utilities and utensils to do it. So uh -huh. um, I have a laser cutter. I got a CNC machine. I can get the exotic woods. Uh, may maybe mine will not be specifically that. I was working on a modular gaming table was another thing, which I know technically Wormwood has their version, but mine was 
built out of you know Baltic and plywood so it wasn't going to be as pretty looking as theirs but it was designed for people to have small houses and the idea with it was it was little sections that you could basically you know bolt and then you take the top off and you, you know, kick out a leg and it goes in so we, we had this whole ecosystem we were trying to build uh, there's even hmm. 3d printed ones I've seen I got files for those there's plenty of that wow. kind of stuff I love yeah. it I love it Opening ceremonies yeah. is pretty big. That's where the people stand in front sometimes, and they'll be like, are you ready to come in? Are you ready? And they like, you get the big crowd. I always love filming the, the going in piece. It's it's kind of crazy. It's great. I mean, um, it's why you go to opening day for Ren oh, Fairs and stuff, you know? You, you I to... just reminded myself, I hope I didn't fuck that up. Uh, I didn't know you had to buy tickets for Gen Con. Uh, it used to be a thing you didn't have to do. You might have to buy tickets for the Gen Con. Tickets for the dance. Dance. Uh, it is, oh, fuck, it's already sold out. So that's the thing that really aggravates me. It's a free event, but you have to get tickets for it. And I forgot last year, because it's maximum 10 to 800, so I don't even know if I can go to it this year, because that we couldn't go to it last year, and I thought it was I'm stupid. Sh- I'm thought sure there will be people who don't want to go. absolutely dumb. Well, but that's the problem. If you don't have a ticket, they won't let you in. Oh, they won't just be like, well, we didn't get anybody in. Yeah, I guess. I so guess now I'm just going to go, instead of going to that event again, I'm just going to go to the bars downtown, and I'm just going to get rip-roared with everybody else. Cause, there you go. You know, that, that event is fun. Like, granted, there's a lot of younger kids there, so I guess it depends on your version of what you're trying to do when you're there. But, like, you know, it's yeah. it's it's a rave-ish style thing, right? It's the closest to an anime rave that you're going to get. So you'll mm-hmm. you'll have people that, you know, I think they sell alcoholic drinks, last I remember, but it's, again, you know, kind of like within that big, grander section of the, the the ballroom uh fuck i forgot about that i knew i forgot to go because it's it's always fun to just get in there and just dance because that's what the wife likes to do and it's just that's a good ambience to doing it especially with fellow nerdy gamer geeky people it's just uh um, right yeah oh well you know but it's sold out no. so i it's all right I yeah, same deal you know you should have thought about a... it and it see, for every thing. every ounce of planning I thought I did, I obviously didn't get it all done. So, oh well, that's <laughs> that's a uh, you're you're booked and then some. Card Halla, there we go. That's one of the ones I was talking about. So this is some of the stuff they build that you throw for charity. Uh, Fun. So that's, that's super exciting. Uh, y- you know, sometimes um, you'll find old like I found Star Wars cards in there that when they were all done and bent up and they were like done throwing stuff. You know, you, you know they're like a really rare card that maybe somebody didn't care about or whatever and it's just like you know you put them back in the box but sometimes you know i've seen people take them as souvenirs i'm sure they don't want people to do that but it's just it's amazing when you start looking around because there's some of these dead games that like they call dead but then you're like oh man i'm totally into that game why is this in here like i'm curious i don't know maybe there'll be flesh and blood cards this year i could technically drop off one of my box of nine thousand count bulk and just see if somebody uses it right but i want to keep my bulk i don't really want to donate it to that but it is for a good cause yeah. so if i look and they're looking like there's a deficit of cards i'll probably see if i can you know quickly thumb through something that i know like i have a box down here that's nothing but uprising cards and i know i have mm-hmm. so much uprising i can just drop that off and be like here you go like that's you know five thousand uprising cards because i already have way too many uprising cards so yeah i don't know if they're are they gonna do a drag show no i don't know if they are I'm sure there's there's, a lot of there's ancillary there. stuff that you can get to. Um, I don't know if they have the never ending never ending dungeon. That's typically something you can kind of see. Uh, this is other things. Pathfinder award ceremonies. The dice tower is always in there. They have a pretty elaborate video setup sometimes. Like I think last year I saw them. They had similar to what I have in the studio here, where they have like an ATM, several cameras. They got a guy live switching and they're doing interviews and stuff. So it's it's always neat wow. to see some of these. Yeah, um, that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy. This looks like the, uh, no, is that the video? That's not the movies. Dungeons and Dragons, 50 Years of Adventure. Hmm. Lake Geneva Tactical City. So I went to, a couple years ago, I went up to Lake Geneva because it was on the way up to a place that uh, was by where I worked. And I got I got to go to the store uh, that apparently Garfield or somebody was at or his brother. I don't remember, but it was Lake Geneva Games. And apparently that's a, that's, I got this dice when I went in there. And apparently that's a very important game store in the uh, the, the ethos of the uh, magic world um, hmm. and gaming community. So I don't remember the exact of, idea, but so I don't a like of, A lot of nerd culture in, in Indianapolis, so... Yeah, we're only on page 75 172, by the way. We haven't even, like, scratched the server. This is just, like... Yeah, you know, I definitely suggest... I'd say if you are going to look for things to do, this is probably the, a great resource for you to to do that in. Because it'll give I you actually, an update on everything. 
don't know if they I was trying to see if they still did the whole uh, these are some of the celebrities that are there Peter Adkins uh, mm -hmm. Matt John uh, Mike Carr so you know there's plenty of people that are in here for depending on your uh, type of celebrities you're looking for I thought they used to, they used to the, the books used to be really thick the guides and they would contain mm -hmm. um, the actual schedule or like things that would be like the events you could look them up but i don't know if they they stopped doing that this actually just might be 172 pages worth I, of like probably i probably wouldn't be surprised ads. if it's at the back of it right like it typically kind of a, is but i figured i had started seeing it by now so this is i think uh, you're i think you're in you're like two-thirds of the way through this entire pamphlet so far so we'll see there you go there's some wooden board game stuff, card gaming. There's some Bloomboro. That's a new magic set. Uh, painting. There's tons of drink and paint. Um, Warlord games. That's a... So it's interesting. All these are oh, Army Painter. That's a good paint. Mm -hmm. um, I use Citadel, Warlord, you know, I just Army Painter. All those are all fun. So much. I'm, I'm literally blowing through this like light speed here, as you can tell. Uh, yeah. There's a cosplay there's a, there's contest. A lot, a lot going on. Hey, is any is any flesh and blood folks going to the cosplay contest? I'm gonna try a flesh and blood contest. Dude, I I think that'd be so rad. Could you imagine? Just well, you know what? I, the competition's know, I know fierce, though. I'll tell you the you competition. You know who I know is, is going. I know because I know who goes every year is um is Rachel Max Frosty. She goes okay. every year. So I I don't know whether or not she participates in the cosplay contest because, uh, I mean, I know she certainly could could get it out of the park there but uh this is the isle of misfit events this is basically where i think my event landed um, right i mean you had to obviously pay for being in the advertisement i highly doubt i would be in there um looks like there's trade day promotion uh event highlighting that's ebay so this is yeah, all I trade think, day I think you just have to look through the whole thing and try to find exactly what you're trying to do because it seems Pins. like it's very Pens are huge. People trade mm -hmm. and, and ask for pens uh, a lot. There's live entertainment too, by the way. Oh, hey, there's I know that person, the the belly dancers. I know this is I don't know. I'm not gonna say her real name here because I don't know what name she wants to go by because there's multiple names I know her by. So I know that individual and I know several of these others. But that's a they're they're a troupe that performs. Uh, the Klingon band is back. Yes, absolutely. There you go. Is Five Year Mission gonna be here? I don't know. Five Year Mission is another really good band. Um, there's some other really good performers that I've seen. Like, there's some people that do some Seems really... Seems like it's a lot of people from the, the Ren Fair. Oh, heck yeah, yeah. yeah. There's The so Venn diagrams cool. are almost stacked on top of each other. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's, you know, it's, like I said, it's always the same kind of culture that ends up being... I need to double check where it, my so. kilt is at, because i got to wear my kilt for one of the days. I just... It's always... It, I always The only reason I hate wearing my kilt is I have a kind of a cheapish one where there's very little pockets. So, like, I need to get something like a utility. Oh, no something. pockets at Gen Con? That's, yeah, that's... That, should, that, that should have been on your on your notes. Bring pockets. Yeah, Don't have bring pockets. It doesn't have pockets. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Crunchyroll will be there. I can complain about how expensive their services got. <laughs> I, 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 for somebody who uses Crunchyroll every single day, I get my money's worth. So, <laughs> yeah, Authors that's Avenue. Nice. That's more nice. Authors. It's going to be good. Oh man, I'm pushing through. We're gonna get to the end. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. Right, we're almost there. I'm almost. I'm almost to the end. What is all this? Yeah, it definitely escape? seems like it's kind of like out. It's. It doesn't seem very concise. I'd assume they probably have an actual schedule pamphlet available for people who are there at the convention, but. That's uh, gonna be this... all. I think they moved it all online. Oh, did they? Yeah. Ooh, join oh. the event team. Yeah, that's kind of. There you go, coordinators. Let's see, do I know where's the name? Captains, is he in here? He's in here somewhere. I know several captains that are in here. Yep, I see his name. I'm not going to point it out, but yep, he's on that list. So, in nice. memorandum, obviously some people must have passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, with when you get to this big size, right? Like there's a big oh, War Machine's back too. They uh, Steam oh Games re release some Cricks, baby. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can play some Cricks because that's a degenerate game. That's the end of it right there. But yeah, the Gen Con that's events. It. Schedule. If you go and look up find events, I guess I can. They'll just be. They'll, you can just pull it up essentially on the on the website. Yeah, so right? this is like how you do events. So you can look for event types, right? So I have oh, five fun. different. Okay. Yeah, it's all digital. But like, if you want to look for specific event types, this is because I typed in Gen Con dance. Like, if you go out further, right? This is what kind of event are you looking for? 
uh, there's 23,738 categories, right? So <laughs> how many, cool. how, or I'm sorry, 23,738 events over four days. Right. 24,000, nearly 24,000 events over a four-day span. And you're going to be attending all of them. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, what kind of, there's adult 21 plus, anything interesting? I don't know. These, some of these are probably interesting. They'll probably just tend to be like more. So here's uh, entertainment events. Like I can specifically look for what's an entertainment event. So Elfin Song, Baldur's Game, feed, Theme Party, General. That's not sold out. What is that? Hmm, five Baldur's hours. Game, theme party? Five hours. When is this? Uh, Thursday at 9 p.m. Like that's a little role play experience. That's kind it, of fun. Cease your endless toil for night and deliver the finest drinking establishment in Faerun, the Elfin Song Tower. Our tavern features the finest entertainment across the realm. Perfect place to celebrate, including sorcerers, blah, 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 blah. Find yourself witness to bur DJ's burlesque drag fantasy performance. This That's, that's an example right there. So honestly, um, maximum attendance, minimum 250, max... It's a five-hour event. <laughs> well, because it starts at 9 and probably goes to 2 or 3 in the morning. And it's yeah. at Union Station Grand Hall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy one of these. I'm going to buy one of these tickets for me and the better half so that we can actually do something that night. Because that will give us um, Thursday, right? Uh, that will give us something nice. fun to do in the evening. Because my event's on Friday. But it looks right. like the one for... It says Thursday. And that's a VIP experience, a late quest, nerdy. I don't know if there's a way to see how many are left. Um, I'm sure there's there's a way, but that's like that's events, right? So if now if I go out of events, uh, this is Island of Misfit events. That's where I would exist if I was in these. Uh, so mm -hmm. you know, pedal drink, tour bus with brewery. So there's um, just like fun little things to check out the area. Yep, yeah, brewery tour, mixology panel. That sounds fun. Fun. Um, Pedal your drink through downtown. So, I mean, there's obviously a bunch of that kind of stuff. Tradable card games. Let's see. What's in tradable card games? Commanders and Cocktails. See, we need to do a UPF and Cocktail event. That's and cocktails. right there. That you get it set up for next year. I'll be there. UPF, UPF and Cocktails. UPF okay. and Cocktails. Notepad. Cool. UPF. Where the UPF and drinks? Got it. That sounds like a blast. We're gonna have to charge one hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know. That sounds like a lot. Why is it one hundred and fifty dollars? Must be twenty-one. That is kind of crazy. Uh, two rounds of pods, three to four players. Event starts. Adult beverages are included. Deck box sleeves and a recipe Hello. card from BDN and special wooden coaster to commemorate event. So I, I'm assuming it's a multitude of things. They probably rented a, a vendor space. I mean, if you're talking 80 people, right, they, they probably I mean, have it. I mean, if drinks, if it's open bar, that's what Brothers you're Brothers Bar and for. Grill, yeah. So. Yeah, you're, you're paying for open bar at that point. That's yeah, Josh. Yeah, cocktails, exactly. We yeah, can we can do all sorts of... Cocktails, that's what we're talking about. Anime activities, I gotta see it. I, what is it? Cosplay oh, Deviants, yeah, yeah. the 21 plus yeah, party. You don't, this. You don't want this. This is degenerate. I, this is, let me tell you, the panels I've gone to at ASEN for 21 plus... There are things that I know. I won't get into this. This is not. This is not going to be something that is going to be family friendly at all. Don't. If you are not prepared for the things you are going to see at twenty one plus anime events, do not go to them because I will. will... I will be honest with you. This cosplay deviance party. I think they because this is the one with the DJs. So like, this may be actually worth going to um, because it might be like it's the, it might be like the raves. Yeah, it basically is. So this one is on. Uh, this one's on what Saturday at nine p.m. But, I mean, mm -hmm. keep in mind, right, if you're going to be out all night for some of these events, the, the other, you know, problem is, yeah, you can be going to each of these each night, so spend 50 bucks to get into the event. But if you're out till 3 in the morning, then you're going to be, you know, kind of dragging ass for the next morning because you're not following your, your cardinal rule for going back sure. to the very beginning. For sure, right? Yeah, you're, you're, you are. You're, unless, of course, you follow their rule of five hours of sleep because if you get super wasted and then end up going to bed at 2 a.m. and then you get five hours of sleep and wake up at 7 a.m., you might be able to make those uh, those those panels, but goodness gracious, Josh, it is it is absolutely you. a fantastic time. And look at this; they even have Heroes of Barcadia. We saw that in the brochure, so it looks yep. like they're doing events. Like if you wanted to just hang out and drink, and, and again, free. this is this is yeah, there are free events. I do want to stress that you can do things for free once you've purchased your badge. I think there is mm -hmm. the you know kind of item that's already there. Now, if I look at what's in the mature. There's over 2,000 events. I'm not going to try to go through all that, but I'm sure there's plenty of interesting stuff, right? 
So, yep. I mean, it just depends. Everything you're looking at here. Um, I'm assuming that the reason it says there all that is because we can look for so there's the film festival there's a bunch of you know maybe there's good films going on so what kind of films are are there avatar the last airbender watch party well, okay that dude, i'm gonna tell you that was something that i really enjoyed was there, there were times in which they were just marathoning animes at asan and i would just sit myself down it, it would be like 8, 8 p.m or something i'd be drunk as a skunk at 8 p.m and just sit down and watch a new anime that I have not gotten into. They were starting on episode one, and I would just watch the first, like, six episodes with a whole bunch of people, and it, I, I don't know. It's a chill time if Th you're there with This might be worth watching, watching, the Gary stuff. Gygax documentary screening. Um, you know, it's kind of intriguing because that, you know, Gygax is a very, very important individual in the mm -hmm. community. Um... There's LARPing stuff, miniature hobby, non-collectible trading card games. Let's. I'm curious. What's okay? Let's see. What's this Sports. like? LC LCG. This is Dominion. Dominion. That makes sense. It's a card game. It's non-collectible. Okay. Imploding kittens. I have that in the back shelf. Unstable unicorns. I have that in the back shelf. Zombie Town. Don't know if I have that one. Are you a werewolf? That's a fun game. Uh, cards Against Humanity. Have that back there. Mm -hmm. uh, Flux. I got a bunch of different Flux games. Have played Nuclear War. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go through all these, but you yeah, get there's the idea. a lot. There's Legends of something. And it's so, so me. Oh, Stable Unicorns. I think I said that earlier. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Oh, that's private window because I didn't want to share anything. That's that's the trick, right? I, I learned my lesson real early on with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, trade Day event. True Dungeon. So here's another thing about True Dungeon. So a lot of these are going to say sold out. And that is probably, for the most part, true. Um looks like there's some that are not sold out i need to reach out to my buddy gabe and see if any of these meet up with my schedule because i do want to do a run they are 108 to 118 dollars but that's um, insane <laughs> well when you're done with true dungeon you end up with stuff have you seen the true dungeon tokens no i don't i don't know anything i don't even know what true dungeon is okay i'm gonna educate you in two seconds here hold on okay true dungeon is is the, this is uh oh my okay. god this I... is Oh god! All right, so I'm gonna try to not dox myself because I don't. I want to have the non-UPS label. But you get these tokens, right? These are these are basically like poker chips. They're, as you can hear, very, uh, very good. There's different rarities on them and different types uh -huh. of ones. But like, uh, they these are all the past events I've done. So I've gone to various ones, and when you when you complete them, you get these pins. So like I successfully survived the barb's beard nightmare bounty on nightmare mode and i've done you know plenty of runs with uh with my buddy you need experience point tokens and you level up so it's basically literally like a DD you know character campaign kind of a thing uh which is kind of where i got some of my idea for my version of the uh, you want, pve you, you might if you're going to show stuff off you might want to switch to your full screen camera oh sure here Ooh. so like go. this is me organizing i play a paladin so like this oh is a lot of God. this is all tokens that i have and like this is my paladin set to where if i were to go to gen con i need to take this with me it's actually a good thing i forgot to i remember to do this because this is a lot of the tokens that i would run on my character itself so i would run these tokens as like the, the character tokens and then like maybe you have things like these are um is it, is from, it, is, so is it just like LARPing? Like, are you LARPing? Is that what this it's is? It's kind of, but it's a little bit more controlled. You actually use like a shuffleboard that like you your weapons go in, and then there's some other rules. I'm not a hundred percent like um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how to explain this much better. But like, True Dungeon is like in the truest form a very complex like it's a visual experience. You go there for not only the camaraderie of the people that you're with, but like uh -huh. you're you're truly getting imagine like again a, a a ballroom where it's pitch black and on the inside you're guided in and there's like a you've entered the dungeon of whatever and now you're going to you know have to solve this riddle and you have to figure out a puzzle and it's a live puzzle and you're like okay we gotta maybe figure out this you know painting and do all this thing and there's digital online version but the fun ones are in person right so there's huh. true dungeon online um there are some tokens that are worth tens of thousands of dollars like Wow, I have their worth I, actual money, like currents. Like, you can sell them. You can sell them. I have a friend that has like probably uh, I don't know ballparking fifty to a hundred thousand dollars worth of tokens. Oh my god! There's are they just like 
fun little collectibles you get based on certain adventures or is it like no you use you them to things? you literally use them to play the game so like there's some websites called like trent's tokens is a good example uh -huh. okay now this has turned into a true dungeon podcast uh hold on i'm gonna go whoop up here so <coughs> like trent's tokens as an example uh this is the 8k auction so uh -huh. like true dungeon okay so if you go to true dungeons website here um this is like what it looks like so this is some of the information that's provided but like if i go to my account and log in well i don't know if i can do it in this but i have experience points near certain levels and then inside of it you know you can buy you can buy tokens so like this pack is ten dollars but to give you an idea of the insanity of cost right that packs 250 that packs a thousand that packs two thousand and then down what here you start get, you start fuck? getting into one thousand eight thousand dollar packages like you know money is spent on this game like i think one of these down here um you know there's if i go back to trent's token right I mean, and that I just one looks like it was to... eight grand eight grand for a set of tokens yep so here's a consignment right and you can you can obviously spend as little or as much as you want but if i go to sort by maybe high to low right uh there is a two thousand two hundred and forty nine dollar rod of seven parts now obviously there's a lot of nuances to this and i don't know all the details but like to get this you had to do certain things be at certain events do stuff combine things send stuff off you know whatever like these are legendary so like 1900 1700 you can start to see how these can get uh very expensive i remember reading up on this boots of four one there's treasure <laughs> enhancers there's different things what in the hell this, this is, is this is a whole level i'm like i i if i had more time I this is an ecosystem where you can lose yourself but in a good I, way it is insane i listen i'm i'm a i'm a sucker for some good real world rpg nonsense and this is this is kind of very very cool i'm this and might be a rabbit hole i end up going down this is it's a dangerous rabbit hole but it's a fantastic rabbit hole but like this is an example of like when i go to the uh, event and you're done. Oh, hey, I'm going to barcodes now. Look at me. Ooh, I'm barcodes, a fan. let's go. Woot. Hold on, we're almost there. Back there to is. me. Okay. So, like, this is a guidebook of, like, in this year, this was all the tokens that you could get for 2023. And they walk you through all the different stuff. And then there's ultra rares, there's legendaries, there's different, you know, <laughs> equations and tokens and checklists and transmute recipes and oh my formulas. God, it's like, it's like and, collecting quarters, but <laughs> for stats. And the fun thing here, right, is it's all you, you go through and the whole point is you, you beat the rooms. Like I managed to do all of these rooms with the groups and some of them we didn't survive, but most of them we did. So like this is my collective of treasure trove collection of completed stuff. And I'm sure that there are even more that I have missed because I kind of, uh, again, due to the cost, right, because each of these runs are fairly expensive, I kind of, right. you know, backed away a little bit from this because I was finding I was spending quite a bit of money on it. And um, and some of these got pretty expensive, but it's just, it's a fun experience. It is just a fantastic time. Uh, you got to try it at least once. If nothing yeah. else, do it at least once. For sure, yeah. I'll definitely have to check it out. I'll see, uh, you know, get to... Get There's my commoner set. Stuff. You like commons, right? So complete set of commons yeah. and uncommons, five hundred bucks. <laughs> oh my god! What in the world? There's bulk. There's bulk for this. <laughs> oh my god! And wow. Yes, I was at one point trying to get into selling bulk in these because I started oh going. Oh my god! I will see if I can find. So at the convention, uh, there's a couple of vendors that have these like giant buckets. Or you can like dive your hand in and like scoop through and find stuff. Um, sometimes they have them, but yeah, they sell them in, in boxes of ten and twenty. And obviously, this is the real high end stuff, right? There are there are cheap ones. Like if you go to uh, low to high, right? There's you know eight cents, fourteen. Cents. They're they're affordable things. But just like every game, right? You can you can meta game it and you can do all the high end. There's an app, right? So you use the app to you know show some of your tokens. Sometimes uh, you got to come in with the physical tokens. It's it's fantastic. So. Right. Hi there. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up with that. I think that 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 is enough discussion and talk for one day. So there you go. Well, there you go. That's uh, our our wonderful Gen Con rundown, and then also uh, a deep, a slightly early deep dive into True Dungeon. So that's kind of cool. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, like, comment, share, hit the bell. Go find Alex on Ashwings TCG. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm going to do the things, and we're gonna continue talking about more stuff. I have the. Uh, the common language podcast that i came out with that uh releases every single week uh on wednesday or thursday depending on uh on, on how i feel to release it but if you're a channel member 
you get it a little early. So if you want to support me, you can go do that. But uh, yeah, that's where I am. And then I'm on this channel, Geeks First. And then in theory, depending on uh, if I keep working as hard as I am, we'll have the uh, Geek Speak podcast. Although I really wish I had to come up with the uh, name that you had because that title language one <laughs> sounds just much better. But uh, I'm going to talk about other things other than just flesh and blood on that particular podcast. So I feel like my name will at least ring true for that. But honestly, that, that name is gold. You, you, got a, you got a good one on that one. So Well, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes my brain does the thing, and that's uh, I'm very happy about it. Now I get to go figure out how to end the stream. So cheers to those online. Yes, yes. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for coming. What buttons am I hitting? Uh, probably you hit the, the 